in this presentation i am going to introduce you to the t distribution so i'll explain you what is the genesis of t distribution from where it does from where does it come then i'm going to demonstrate t distribution using excel example then we are going to understand similarity and dissimilarity with the normal distribution and then we are going to learn how to interpret the t table so let's understand this way that you know what we are going how we are going to do it you know we are going to take 200 we are going to generate 200 random numbers in the excel then we will be taking sample means for first you know we will take 30 data points we'll take the average we'll take the 10 data points we'll take the average we'll take 5 data points randomly and take the average and then we are going to see that you know what distribution does it follow however to understand it better what we are going to do that we will multiply the numbers the averages by 100 and we'll take the floor value so that the values remain in the range of 00 to 99 so let's see the distribution of sample means what happens so here is the data what i have done here that i have generated 200000 numbers using rand function so you have 200000 fun numbers which have been generated using rand function and the rand function generates number between 0 to 1 every time you hit it every time you hit it it generates a new set of number i have just taken those 200000 numbers and pasted it here to make it uh, you know like paste special so that it's it remains there now what i have done i have taken average calculation for the 30 data points here average calculation in teacher and equal to 30 So what I have done, I use the average formula A4 to A33, that is giving me the average of 30 numbers, starting from here to here, which are 30 observations, multiplied it with the 100, and then taken floor and significance one, so that the numbers are always 00 to 99. There is no decimal places. Then I did this again, just taking 10 observations, and then I did again taking just the five observations, right? now after that what you can do you can take data like this go to insert pivot table and then what i have done i'll let me show it to you i came here i drag that average calculation average here and then i took the count of average which is giving me how many times i have got 26 how many times i have got 27 all those things you can you know if you just browse through you will see that the numbers are coming more in the center and they are not so much when you are going to distant same way i did it for when i am taking 10 sample when i am taking the averages for 10 samples and again it is showing that kind of shape what you need to understand though it is starting this time from 11 whereas this was starting with the 26 now take five observations again see this okay this is again you know but this is time it is starting with 3 so it starting with even more extreme values if you think of this was 26 this was 11 and this is 3 so it is starting with more extreme value but to make sense of this you know side by side what we are doing we are putting it here and then let's take a look what we have done this is the number that we have directly pasted now we have got that how many times we have got 3 when we had taken sample of size 10 using v lookup function and if at all 3 is not at all available it should throw zero and that's what it is doing so if you think of you know it is saying 375 i've got 11 time which i was showing you when i was taking sample of 10 i mean think of you know how many times you have got 19 11 times that's what what's coming here 19 11 times right so you can actually download this excel and take a look how many times you have got 30 zero times uh how many uh, how many times you have got average 19 when you have taken 30 data points zero times so i took that the count again when you are taking 30 data points now let's plot it side by side so now take a look what is happening when i put it side by side 
that when you have taken 30 data points these are the blue lines right if you have taken 30 data points this is what we have taken you see it is more in the center than so extreme when you have taken red which is like 10 data uh, uh, average when you are taking 10 data points and how many times these are what is the value of the average and how many times it has occurred this is little spread out than blue I mean if you think of you know in the center there is not so much value and it has gone little spread out what happens when we are taking 5 you know that's the green line if you think of it is more flat right I mean if you think of these are more flat these are taking more extreme values these are less in the center right there is something more all of them are symmetric right and you can say in some sense these are still bell shaped but the side shape of the bell is flattened out hugely right so now let's understand what has happened you know when you are taking sample mean distribution of size 30 it was symmetric and bell shaped what you need to understand the moment you take 30 or more it is nothing but the normal distribution when the sample size reduces you know when you took 10 it flattened out when you took 5 it is still it flattened out even more the extreme value becomes more probable then what is the probability in case of normal distribution so that is dissimilarity with the like normal distribution 30 data points is following normal distribution 10 and 5 both are following t distribution and the t distribution you know you can say when you're taking 5 data points is more flattens when you're taking 10 data points but why it is happening in first place what you need to understand when you are just taking 5 elements there is bigger possibility of getting extreme small or extreme high value and that's why if you think of you know you have got numbers which were as small as 3 when you, you have taken just 5 however when you start taking 10 there is no average which has come 10 why because when you're taking 10 data points there will be some even one or two number comes which are bigger then the average will not be 3 and in case of 30 you you do not have a single observation which is coming closer most of the observation are coming more closer to the center so the point that I'm trying to say that when you are taking big data big size samples the mean naturally tends to cl come close to the center where we are taking a small data you know the mean actually can take little more extreme values and the moment you take sample size of one which is individual contributor this distribution will be uniform right I mean you know it is a uniform distribution where we are taking average and trying to see so the point that I'm trying to say the similarity it has with the normal that you know it is symmetric and bell shaped and dissimilarity that it has it is more flattened out than normal and the smaller the sample size more flattens it out now let's understand one more thing when the sample size is smaller than 30 we call it t distribution and as we have seen the sample statistics is more flattened when sample size 5 than sample size 10 so it is clear that t distribution will have different shape for different sample size right i mean it's not like normal which will have the same sample size i mean you know like when you are taking for 5 observation it is more flattened 10 observation is less flattened so it it's very clear that it will you know for each number of elements it will have different uh, shape so how do we know it to know that let's understand and understand one more concept here which is called the concept of degree of freedom so this time we'll also explain you the concept of degree of freedom so what it is let's say an equation is a plus y b equal to 5 then what you need to understand out of a and b only one can be varied if a is 10 b has to be minus 5 because a plus b has to be equal to 5 a is 0 then b has to be 5 so what you need to understand among a and b only one thing you can vary so degree of freedom in this case is number of elements minus 1 right when you are taking sample means 
you are actually developing an equation like this x1 x2 x3 xn by n so it's an equation due to which you lose one degree of freedom I mean think of it was a plus b equal to 5 so you lost one degree of freedom sample mean is some sense is an again an equation so if there are five elements the degree of freedom will be 4 if there are 10 elements the degree of freedom will be 9 that is the degree of freedom now there is a table of t distribution for different degree of freedom and which I am going to show it to you but first understand why you require it right so if you remember there is a multiplier that we were using in case of normal distribution like z equal to 0.196 when you want to have 95 percent z equal to 2.58 when you wanted 99 percent here x was the sample statistic and sigma was the population standard deviation which when divided by root and give you a standard deviation of sample statistics and then 1.96 is what is a multiplier to this so that you get 95 percent confidence interval the question comes when you have data size smaller than 30 what multiplier you will take it for that we actually need to understand a table I have taken this table from this particular website and pasted here now in this table if you think of you know it is giving you the degree of freedom here and it is giving you the percentage of population that is here so for example if you want you know 95 percent width both sides means 2.5 percent here and 2.5 percent here you will actually go into 2 alpha equal to uh, 2 tail standard deviation equal to 95 percent and if you had taken sample of size 5 you will go degree of freedom 4 and this is the value this is the will give you the multiplier so for 95 percent you will take 2.7764 in case of 10 observation your degree of freedom will be 9 and you will take 2622 so in case of 95 you will you are going to take 2.776 this value right in case of in case of degree of freedom 19 if you are taking sample size of 19 then degree of freedom will be 18 and what multiplier you will have to take you will have to take 2.1009 that so how it will go it will go sample statistics minus 2.1009 into sample standard deviation by root n that will give you the lower limit as and then sample statistics plus 2.1009 into population standard deviation divided by root n will give you the upper limit and that's how you will construct the the confidence interval so I hope you understood fairly that how to use this table here for confidence interval 95 you look at here for confidence interval 99 you look at this column and this is degree of freedom